As fall approached, the success of the previous months of struggle seemed to promise that change would indeed be coming. But any hope of the end to the violence would be crushed on a warm, rainy Sunday morning. I remember how Jane and Adam and myself, how we walked to church, having so much of fun. Earlier that morning, bombers would quietly place a box of dynamite attached to a timer under the steps of the church. Churches were being bombed uh, throughout Birmingham. And the 16th Street Baptist Church was a uh, well-known meeting place for blacks at that particular time. She was so fun, loving. She, she loved to help play baseball. And that little time we had together, I just really loved her. And she loved to be around me because we were so close in age. And she loved to draw. She was so sweet. She wasn't afraid of anything. Cynthia was uh, what we might call today a soulmate. Cynthia was adopted, and uh, what I remembered most about her, she was very petite, but she had a great sense of humor. Denise, she was so quiet and sweet, and she would get along with everybody. Everybody just loved her. And Carol, we was in, all in the choir together, and we would stop by Carol Robinson's house to walk to the choir rehearsal with us. They were just nice young ladies. Something that's rarely mentioned is that there were actually five girls in the bathroom. The fifth girl was Sarah Collins. She was 12 years old and Sarah survived the blast that took place in the women's bathroom here. I arrived at church on September 15th about 9.30. I went upstairs to the church office. All of the adult classes were upstairs so I took them their materials. Then I went back downstairs but I see them there in the bathroom. And when you entered the women's bathroom, there was one large room with freestanding mirrors and sofas and so forth. And beyond that large room was another door that led into the actual bathroom where the toilets and the face bowls where you wash your hands were. And they're talking and primping and uh, I, I know that there are four of them there. What I don't know is that there's a fifth person there, Sarah, was in the back part of the bathroom. But I spoke to them and uh, they were laughing and talking. And then I hurried, I said, well, and let me get these reports done and hurrying up the steps. And as I cleared the top of the steps, the phone was ringing in the church office. And I go in and there's no one there. I answer the phone and the mail caller says three minutes. And as quickly as he said that, he hung up. Holding my material still in my arms, I just hung the phone up, walked out of this door, and began walking into the sanctuary. And I actually took about 15 steps. We counted them one day. And I was right at this point here, about to walk down this aisle, uh, when the bomb exploded. I was standing over from by the sink, and they came in and, uh, as they were leaving out, they, they stopped. Denise asked, added a tie sash on her dress. And uh, I was looking over from the sink. But when she reached her hand out, the tie sash, and all of a sudden, I heard a loud sound. Boom. And I called out Addie's name about three times. First, I had to call Jesus because it scared me. It scared me so bad. And I said, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. And I couldn't see nothing because the debris, the glass and stuff got in my eyes. And it blinded me instantly. And all of a sudden, I heard someone outside holler, Somebody bombed the 16th Street Church. And... When they came in, they came straight in and and got me out. And I found out later on in the year that his name was Samuel Rutledge. He came in and put me in his arm 
and he carried me out through the hole that was that the bomb made. This was a door, and the steps came down like that. The person hid under the bomb under the steps to plant the bomb, and then the bomb exploded inward to this window here, which is where the bathroom was. The area where the girls were, you would is not an area that you can stand in physically stand in now. But if you could, this is it. This is like the inside looking out. This is for people who were actually standing in the bathroom where the girls, where the explosion came inward. This is the clock that was upstairs. This is how we know what time the bomb exploded, 1022, because the clock stopped. The ambulance came and rushed me to the hospital. I was laying on this little cot for a while, waiting for the eye doctor because he wasn't in. And I remember Janie came in, and uh, when she came in, I asked her, uh, where was Addie? And she said that Addie had hurt her back, but she had, she was coming to see me tomorrow. And, uh, but later on, she was talking to somebody, and she told them that uh, one of her sisters was killed in the bombing. And I was, I was upset because I didn't understand why they had to kill Addie. And then later on, uh, uh, after I come out, of, they rushed me to surgery and they operate on my eye. And uh, I found out that the other three girls, Denise, Carol, and Cynthia, they was killed also. And uh, I was going through this thing I, in my mind all the time, crying at night, wondering why would these girls was killed. I just didn't understand. It was something that we never talked about. No one ever even said, well, are you afraid? Are you okay? One thing about it, they, when I went back to school, they didn't counsel me. They didn't give me any counsel. And I went back to school in a terrible condition. That was a proverbial shock heard around the world because that just showed how dastardly and how cowardly and how mean-spirited, how racist Birmingham was, that four little girls in a church of all places were bombed, including one girl who was decapitated. If that doesn't show uh, evil, I don't know what does. The four charged with the bombing were not even arrested until uh, 15 or 20 years later. They still lived a long life, and yet, when it was time for them to, to be tried and go to jail, the only thing they did was just die. They didn't spend no time in jail. They just died. And still, some is out there. I really believe some are still out there. Oh, they'll be shouting. They'll be shouting. They'll Black people thought that our chances of uh